Hello. Looks like you guys are already chatting. Hi, Paula and Darlene, Eli and Rhonda, to Ariel and Jennifer, Deanna and Tempet Creation, Sophie's Choice, Victoria, Elliot. It's happening now. <laughs> Hi, Renee. Did I miss anybody? Mm, a new name, Aya. Let me know if I said that correctly. Hi, everybody. Let me know if you can hear me well. Yay. Hi, Zachary, Daphne, Patricia, Danielle. <laughs> can y'all believe this is live stream 31? Live stream 31 and I still get butterflies in my stomach. <laughs> uh, hi, Sherry and Jenny, Elena, Vanessa, Chris, Elizabeth. Man, we are working again on the pirate ship. I'm going to put this down here so I can see it a little bit better. I'm trying to get my um, my windows all set up so I can see the comments and everything. Oops. Okay. Oh, someone says you can barely hear me. See if I can, it's up all the way. I'll try and speak a little closer to the microphone. Um, today we're working on the pirate ship. I tried to set up my lighting um, so that the light would catch the paper just a little bit better so that you guys could see it because the entire thing is like it's made out of black paper can be difficult to see, but if I hold it at the right angle, I think you guys can see the details. See? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Okay, good. Um, yeah, let me know if for some reason I go off off the screen or if you can't hear me yeah just let me know in the chat and please forgive me if I miss some comments because I don't have someone with me today um, helping me go through comments my family is entertaining the children <laughs> so, um, okay awesome 12 p.m. here sorry I know there's never there never seems to be a perfect time for everyone just such a bummer. Yeah, usually I stream in the mornings because that's when my kids are at school, but they're not at school anymore. So, <laughs> oh my goodness, 1 a.m., 12 p.m. <laughs> you need to change to live chat or you miss the comments. Well, I see the live chat, um, but... Yeah, if they start going really quick, then I can't see them really well. <laughs> Is this a kit? Are there other designs? Uh, yes. So if you missed last live stream, we started this. And this is a little kit from Paper Nano. And it's called the Black Pirate Ship. I think it's supposed to be based off the Black Pearl, but they couldn't um, use, you know, the name. And so this is as far as we got. Actually, we didn't even get this far. I think we got to maybe like here. And then y'all voted for me to do the rest of this side. And then this side, which was exactly the same, but then I left this part off to show you how I did that. And then we'll keep going from there. But yes, there are um, other kits that they have. So there's buildings and there's a samurai. And... I think it's mostly buildings. There's the Space Center. There's the Sydney Opera House for my Australian friends. <laughs> oh, I think it's on. Oh, I see. Okay, hold on. There we go. I see what you mean. I switched it. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. I actually decided to do my nails. 
<laughs> it takes a lot for me to get the little nail kit out and do it, but I decided to do it. Stormy's in the back. <laughs> She's been enjoying um, digging in her dog bed for some reason. <laughs> oh no, 2 a.m. <laughs> um, before we get started, I did want to talk about something real quick that's important and um, it's just a quick note to anyone that has a laser cutter or a 3d printer not a resin printer like I have but one of those where it like works in layers kind of like a hot glue gun where it goes around and like shoots the the filament out there's a video that I've put in the description box of this live stream there's like a whole movement of people who have these machines that are creating face masks for medical professionals. And so I've been working on that this week, but there's a video down there. So if you do have one of those machines and you're interested in looking into it, it's something that you could, if you have a group of people you know who also have those types of machines, you can get together and make face masks for medical professionals. So that was my thing I wanted to talk about early in the video before we got started. So if anyone just starts off this video and has one of those machines, they can watch that video and get the information because I think it's a really amazing way that that we can help. <laughs> so um, I'm really excited about it and I'm very excited that I can help. And I got um, about 200 visors cut and sent off to the person I'm working with to get together to get them into some medical facilities. So if you're interested in that, go look in the description box below um, for the video of the original person who came up with the idea. So, all right, what are the dimensions of the ship? Let's see, um, it is, the finished size is 145 millimeters by 160 millimeters by 70 millimeters. So that's how big it will be. So it's a little bit larger. So it, it really probably won't work in my captain's quarters unless it's like a huge, um, a huge installation, which I don't know if it would fit. But um, anyway, so that's the size. I don't know if it fit in my captain's quarters, but I thought it would give me some ideas for when I decide to make my own ship. Um, it'll give me some ideas. Uh, Harbor Freight here in the U.S. is donating masks and gloves for all to emergency personnel. That's awesome. Harbor Freight is a great, great company to buy tools, and obviously they're, they're doing something awesome, so that's good. <laughs> okay. Um, what is the next project going to be? Uh, well, for now, I have to get back to some of my current projects because I got to get some of them finished up so um, before I can do anything else otherwise I get too many different things going on and I can't keep up <laughs> so if you're new the way this kit comes uh, it comes in like these sheets and then you have to go through and find the piece that you're looking for and then these are the directions right here I love these types of projects. Unfortunately, I don't have the patience to finish them. Well, I'm hoping I can finish this. Um, I don't know if we'll finish it today, but I am enjoying the process of putting together somebody else's design. And it's just kind of fun to watch how someone else put it together. And it's given me some ideas. So it's always, that's always a good thing. So I've got some tools here I'm going to pull out and I'm going to get some glue out. Yes, this is a pirate ship. Hi, Caitlin. I'm lucky to be on central time too here in Missouri. <laughs> yeah, I always talk about how I wish there was one time zone, but that's not the way the world works. Because um, everybody would like to, to be awake during the day. So <laughs> if they can. I'm going to put some glue in this milk lid and because this is some pretty precise gluing um, I need to use a toothpick and the nice thing about this these instructions is I don't know if you can see 
Let me find a spot. Right here, there's a little bitty light blue. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, light blue spots. So it even tells you where to put the glue when you're putting everything together. So. So excited about being here. I work during the day and I'm lucky one th that still goes to work daily. I'm glad you're here too, Liz. Okay. So, like I said, if I if I miss a question um, that you really want to answer to, just and you and you don't see it, um, or you don't give me like a couple seconds because I know there's like a lag. Um, but yeah, just um, type it again. Okay, so I am going to try and show you to the best of my ability. It is a little bit small. It's, it's kind of a hard thing to live stream, and I let y'all vote last time if you wanted me to keep going, and y'all said yes, so <laughs> I hope that I can show you as much as possible. Let me show you where I am on the directions right now. I am right here. And what I need to do is I need to find these three small pieces, put them together, and then they will finish the hull of the ship. So that's what we're looking for now. And I think it tells you, so it's X12-1, X11-1, and X10-1. So I'm gonna look for those. And luckily on the sheets, it has the letter so I can look on the X sheets and look for, hopefully, the correct pieces. Okay. So here's X, what did I say I needed? Um, why do I still have another one? X9 one? Oh, I, I guess I still didn't, I need to put one more piece on before I put these on. So these four pieces I need to still put on to finish the whole of the ship. Whole, 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 H-U-L-L. <laughs> so I'm going to cut those out real quick. And I'm trying to keep these in order. I don't know if I've done a very good job, but I'm trying. <laughs> Let's see. Have a good dinner. I'm happy to watch someone else craft since I can't get into anything with the grandkids here. <laughs> yeah, kids, um, it depends on their age whether or not you can really get much crafting done. It is like the connections that connect these pieces to the black sheet are so small. They are hard to see. So here's this first piece I need to get on there. And I have to kind of re-remember how I was doing this. I think I just need to bend this guy. Bend this. Just kind of drape it onto the ship. <laughs> um, my kids are old enough to wear they understand when I'm when I say hey I need just you know a few more minutes to fish finish something up or don't touch that it's hot <laughs> or um, you know you're not allowed to touch this they understand that I remember when they were the age where they did not understand that and I actually do have a, um, a video I can't remember what I call it like having a craft room with kids or, or something where I give you some tips that I kind of picked up whenever my kids were little and the way that I did things. All right, I think I remember how to do this. And then I, you just kind of bend it along that first piece, hold it down and pinch. All right. So I'm going to let that dry for just a second. <laughs> Let's see. Black Magic Craft did a good video about crafts he's doing with his five-year-old. That's so cool. <laughs> I see my mom. Hi, mom. 
<laughs> um, have your family had the virus? Um, no, not my immediate family. Um, love from Saudi Arabia, from an Indian national. I used to live in Saudi Arabia when I was younger. Um, we lived, I was very young, so I'm trying to remember. We lived in Yambu and Daharan, I think. I think that's correct. I was very young. <laughs> How can you see when it's black? It does, I mean, I do have to move it around and let it catch the light. So this is the piece I just put on. I was thinking, I didn't know um, if dry brushing it would help. Um, I don't know. Help you guys see it. It the someone asked about. So the, it's, I would just say it's cardstock. I think it's just like a really nice cardstock. Um, yeah, it's it's a little bit thinner than a baseball card. I would say. <laughs> I see my dad too. Hi, dad. No sister to hang out with. Uh, no, she's um. She's helping entertain the children. <laughs> Hi, Jesse. Uh, I would be scared of accidentally ripping the paper pieces trying to pop them out. Yeah, I'm trying to be really careful. However, they're pretty sturdy. That's why I'm saying it's a pretty nice um, cardstock, whatever it is. Trying get all these pieces out all at once and it does say to put these three pieces I'm getting out right now it says to put them together before I put them on the ship and if I remember it was quite a struggle because I just kept going after the last live stream um, because y'all wanted me to finish it up before starting this one but I don't quite remember because I guess that was three weeks ago. Um, Y'all might realize I was actually supposed to post a video this morning because this is the first Friday of the month and we stream on the second Friday of the month. But this week just got way complicated. Um, and the kids' school is kind of ramping up. They're kind of coming up with um, more ways to help kids learn at home which is great, um, but it's more responsibility on the parents. And so it just ended up being a little bit more than I could handle this week, trying to get a video out and learn the technology and all the stuff we were supposed to be doing. So um, that's why I made that post that I was going to do a live stream. And you guys are awesome about that. So thank you. Okay, now I have to figure out which way this goes. This looks backwards. So here it has like the three pieces that are supposed to go together. <sighs> and I have to put them together. So let's figure this out. Okay, okay, okay. All right. I think it goes like this. Yeah, I think it goes like that. <laughs> um. <laughs> Let's see. It's oddly satisfying to watch you put it together. I'm glad y'all are enjoying. I've never actually done a paper model like this before. So like I said, I'm enjoying putting together someone else's design. And um, I actually got a, a comment recently and um, they were talking about, it, it wasn't the nicest comment, but they were talking about how they don't like when people use kits because kits, they just, they just weren't a fan of kits. And uh, basically, okay, so here's the hard part. I have to get these little bitty openings I have to slide one piece into the other. Be very careful. If you do this, be very careful with your exacto. But I have to use it to get this opening. 
open. Anyway, this person was not a fan of kits, and um, I don't think there's anything wrong with kits. Uh, because honestly, each person puts their own work into putting something together, and I don't know. I think kits are awesome, and it's like putting together a puzzle. Then this is ending up being a complicated puzzle. <laughs> but I don't know. I may be biased because I started making kits, but anyway. <laughs> Sorry, I'm missing some comments. I found a great source for free map board. I asked the local framing store to save their offcuts for me. I think they'll work great for smaller projects. That's great. I can't speak for everyone, but I don't mind having a live stream instead of a regular video. Actually kind of feels like a bonus. Yeah, because I, I, I definitely don't make two hour long videos. <laughs> that would be a lot of editing. Although I do usually end up with, I don't know. It could be, oh, I got I got the paper in, yay. Um, I sometimes end up with three, four, five hours worth of footage that I edit down into a video, which ends up being like 20, 30 minutes long or so. I could just leave it all in there, but you guys would be, <laughs> I don't think anyone would watch it all the way through. <laughs> I'm a student. We have an online school right now. The problem is the teachers don't feel how much homework they give us. So now I have way too many assignments. I know that's that's a hard adjustment. I think for for everyone, um, I have a lot of teacher friends, and I have a lot of friends who are parents, and I have um, friends who are students, and my kids are students, and I think everyone's just trying to do their best to adjust. <laughs> uh, what stuff do you use to make a house and glue? Um, right now I use a lot of foam board and uh, with the foam board sometimes I initially use uh, what I'm trying to think, hot glue to put it together but then I try and reinforce it with tacky glue because Tacky glue will last longer in the long run. Okay, I gotta get these open. <laughs> uh, I totally understand using a kit. I would love to when I can afford it, plus so much work goes into the design. Yeah, like I can only imagine how long it took someone to come up with all these intricate little turns and tabs and <clears throat> all sorts of stuff. Okay, so let me get this one on and then I think we might be ready to close up the ship. All right, there we go. And I just need to make sure that it's all together. So I guess there's like little tabs that slide into slots and then once it's all slid in it starts to curve like this and then it fits the curve of the ship <laughs> you're like my bob ross that is a huge compliment <laughs> so nice to be able to interact with you and everyone else yeah i love that I just wish y'all could see this a little bit better. <laughs> I feel bad. I feel like you can't see much of what I'm doing. Okay. Let's see. Um, kits are fine, but it just depends on what you're trying to achieve. I suppose if you want to do your own original thing, then a kit isn't for you. If you're just looking for fun, kits are fine. Yeah, I can agree with that. I think, um, you know, I... I like kits um, for, it's kind of a nice break, I guess, from having to sit there and measure and figure things out on your own. And that's that part of it I really, really like. And so I think there is definitely a, um, 
value in figuring out how to create your own designs and put your, you know, because no one can actually, there can't ever be enough kits to cover the amount of creative ideas that you can come up with your own head, in your own head. And so there's definitely value to being able to create your own items because, you know, no one's ever going to make all the kits you need to create a project. So there's definitely value in that. Um, but yeah, I do, I do enjoy kits every now and then. Hey, Aira, curious to know if you've ever sorted your paints, if you put them in a better container where you can see what you have. I put them, um, I did finish sorting them. We got through almost all of them. Turns out I have a lot of yellow. Um, I put them in, back into the little shoe holder. So now I can see them all and they're all color coordinated. So it kind of looks like a rainbow on my wall. And yeah, I really like how, I, I'm really glad I sorted them because now I can kind of tell what I have and what I need. <laughs> okay, so here's the tricky part. I'm gonna see if I can show this to you. Okay, there's three tabs on this piece I have in my hand. Three tabs right here. There are three minuscule holes here. And then I have to add glue here. And then I had to bend these tabs here so that it all goes together and glues at one time. So. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> Let's see, did I name the paints? No, I really, they ended up just being, um, after we did, I think the yellows we did were the last ones we did. Um, they were just like tans and, and white and blacks that I put together. Let's see. You can turn off part of your rain and recharge it a bit when building a kit, very true. Okay, so I'm gonna add glue to all the places I think I need glue. And then we'll try and stick this piece on. And while I glue my finger, apparently. And then the whole of the ship will be, oh no, the back end, we gotta do the back end. It's not quite done yet. Okay, I think that's all I'm, the glue I'm gonna add right now. Well, yeah. <laughs> Wish me luck here, I gotta get three tabs into three tiny slots. Okay, one, two, come on, there we go, three. All right, before I push it down, I think I need to add glue to the other tabs, which are now kind of in the ship which that's okay, because then if I accidentally kind of get them blobby, no one will see. <laughs> I'm working on my Beacon Hill dollhouse. It's gonna be all black. <laughs> Found your channel and got the idea to build one. Awesome, there's a lot of people um, starting projects right now, which is, you know, is a great time to start a project. Um, miniatures is a great way <laughs> to uh, spend time and, uh, use some creativity for sure. <laughs> All right, so here's, here's where I have to kind of form it and try, oh, one of the tabs came out, May Day. This is probably the trickiest part so far is this front piece. So let me get it stuck down. Please behave. I would appreciate it. Okay. Stick down, stick down. Oh, I'm missing so many comments. I'm sorry if I'm missing something. I'm I'm doing a small room box for Mortician Gomez. That's awesome. I hope you send me a picture. I want to see it. 
My go-to drink is vodka and cranberry juice. I may have had a margarita the other night. <laughs> Found some miniatures that were new to me. French faves. My f are very collectible, made of porcelain. Oh, wow. I think kits are good as long as you can tweak them, give them your own tweak. I mean, doing a min... I'm doing a mini deer with mini Legos, but I changed the position to make it more dynamic. Yeah, I, I like that. I was actually thinking, I was like, I think I could probably paint this because it is a pretty cool little ship, but it would be fun to give it a little bit more character, but I also don't want to ruin it either because paint and paper can sometimes not mix. <laughs> Okay, I think, so I'm just holding it right now. Plus, if I paint it, it'll cover up any of these glue marks that I end up with it on here. <laughs> My world is comic book illustration, but I'm fascinated by miniatures and mini building and painting. I do some of that painting gaming miniature figures, but you take things to a different level. Um, I've always thought... Um, it would be fun to do some kind of uh, comic book based miniature. I think that would be really fun. <laughs> Let's see. Working on turning a crappy plastic sideboard into a baby changing table for my mermaid bathroom. Thanks for the suggestion. S'mores in a campfire? That sounds awesome. <laughs> you have an Insta. Yes, I do. Uh, Bentley? It's at the bottom of scrolling on the bottom here. And Bent, I think it's Bentley. Yeah, it's just Bentley House Minis. Okay, so both sides are done. Now I think the next step is the back. Let me look at the directions. Yes, so X13, this piece right here, becomes the back of the ship. Let me look. For X13. So if I do paint the ship, what do y'all think I should paint it as? Might be fun to do, I don't know, something opposite of like a really light colored one or I don't know. Is that a bad idea to paint the ship? <laughs> So this is where it becomes hard to find things because you think, oh, it's nice because they're numbered, but everything has X on it. Or they're so how am I supposed to find what I'm supposed to find if everything is labeled X? Oh, it's on the first page. <laughs> of course it's on the first page. First page I looked at. <laughs> Make it look like wood. Ooh, it would be cool to put it like in a scene where it looked like it sunk or something. I don't know. Painted abandoned coffee, <laughs> the paint that we made last night. Okay, I'm going to cut this guy out. This was on the first page here. It looks like a little house. You know you want a brown ship. <laughs> yep, everything I paint is brown. <laughs> oh, let me look at the directions. I'm looking at the chat for directions here. Okay, so I need to bend this in and this down. So it looks like that. And then somehow I'm supposed to stick it inside this ship. I think. Let me see. Okay. Oh, okay. On the outside of the ship. So I need to bend all these tabs in. Let me find my tweezers. Bend all these tabs in. And then I just glue it on top of it, which is a lot easier than trying to put it inside the ship and then putting the tabs down on top of it. So I much prefer this idea. <laughs> so just bend all of these in. And the way they cut this kit, uh, everything bends really, really easily. So I don't feel like I'm having to 
force fold anything. Let's see. When building a dollhouse, it's better to build from. Oh, when building a dollhouse, is it better to build from scratch or from a kit the first time? I have a huge box that wants to be a dollhouse, have no clue where to start. Um, I started with a kit. The, there we go. Adam's family house right there is a kit. And basically the center part of it is a kit and then I built onto it. So sometimes it's nice to start with a kit. Like you could get a really, um, like simplified one that just has one or two or three rooms and then uh, kind of use that as your base to build on and then start just building whatever you want from there. But it's kind of nice to have a sturdy piece to start with. But if you want to go for something with um, a cardboard box, more power to you because that I have definitely seen people make amazing things from just a box. So definitely go for it. Just make sure that you will, that you support it because cardboard um, will kind of get limp over time or if it gets um, bent, the walls could start to cave in. So just make sure you're reinforcing it with some foam board or give it some columns. Um, yeah, so just kind of reinforce it and make it a little bit stronger than just a um, just one ply of cardboard. Okay, so hopefully I can get this in here. Let's see. I see people like in the shipwreck idea. <laughs> Maybe you could paint it white, although it might sound weird. It would look amazing. Do you have everything dilapidated? Um, yeah, prob well, let's see. I don't think the Fairfield that I was working on in the live streams before I needed to take a break from it, I don't think the Fairfield is going to be dilapidated. I mean, it might be aged slightly, but I don't think it will be, especially not like the abandoned coffee shop. That place is really, really run down. All right, I got the back piece on here, but I don't know why. I, that's the style I really enjoy creating. I just, um, like I'm even drawn to abandoned photography. I just think it's beautiful. And so I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> Let's see, a white ghost ship. You could paint it pale. Um, put barnacles on it. It's a good idea. Pale blue ghost ship. I, w I would wonder, or someone says reinforce it by using Mod Podge. That's a good idea. If you decide to paint it, coat of Aileen's Tacky will toughen up the paper um, to a more leathery texture so it won't go wonky. Of course, the wet glue can make it. Well, if it's a shipwreck, it's okay if it's a little dinged up, right? <laughs> Greenleaf Dollhouses has some very affordable kits that aren't too complicated and make a good first kit. Uh, this one right there is a green leaf, and I think it has, it's just one lower floor and one upper floor. I can't remember the name of it, but it went together in a day. And um, I mean, I put it together in a day like several years ago. <laughs> Uh, but I do plan to work on a little bit more. And someone said um, Black Magic Craft was working on something with his five-year-old. I wonder if he's worried about COPPA issues because I was thinking, I was like, it'd be so cool, especially during this time where my entire family is home to actually, because this is my daughter's project. I'm like, it would be really cool to work with my daughter and like have her talk. Like I don't show my kids on camera. Um, but um, have her talk because she has ideas and she's made plans. I think that would be really cool. But um, I'm just so worried that uh, Kappa is going to be like, I hear kids' voices. And then they're going to come for me. So anyway, <clears throat> yes, the orchid. Thank you. It is the orchid. You are correct. <laughs> uh 
You did excellent research on the alchemist. Why not some images of famous pirate ships that were captured? Well, that's a good idea. Like, look up some, some examples. Okay. We did the back. Oh, now we get to do... All right, so now we're doing these pieces that I guess reinforce... What is this called? I'm think I think I got the word um hull correct. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hold on a second. <clears throat> I get to talking. <clears throat> Excuse me. I get to talking and my voice just gives out. I think I got hull correct for this part of the ship, but I don't know what this piece is called. I don't think it's called a fin. Keel. Is that what it's called? <laughs> Black magic daughter didn't say anything and only saw a hand once or twice. Okay, that's probably what I would have to do too. I'd have to say this is what she wanted, this was her design choice, and go from there. We have these eight shelf bookcases that I'm making doll to doll towers out of basically apartment buildings for him, for them. That's cool. Um, I like, I love seeing the entire, uh, I don't know. They used to do this back in like the old days where they take an entire piece of furniture and it would become like you, it had the cabinets and everything like that. So I think that's really cool to have furniture that you turn into uh, like a dollhouse. <clears throat> There's something very intriguing about hauntingly abandoned or long forgotten things. They evoke and engage your imagination. You always want to know more about what was or what happened. Yeah, I think it's that. And there, it's also like I'm just so fascinated about the way that nature can just like come and take back over some something that humans built in, you know, like some of these places, humans were only out of it or it had only been abandoned for a couple years. But then all of a sudden there's, there's moss and there's trees growing up through the tile. And there's, I mean, it's just, it, it's so crazy to me that, you know, just humans being gone out of a place for just a short amount of time, all of a sudden, you know, all this nature comes like tidal wave back into it. So, let's see. Oops, sorry. Keel hauling was punishment where the punishee was dragged along the keel from one side of the ship to the other. Ow! That sounds like horrible. Bows, bowsprit? is the front piece that sticks out. The keel is the bottom fin of the boat. Oh, okay. It's awesome. Maybe you should make a miniature based on a book novel you read in one. I actually recently saw a movie and it was one of those movies that was just like, the story was okay um, and interesting. But it was the cinematography and the scene and the, the, basically the set of where everything was taking place was so, and like, I just had this, this draw to recreate it. I'm like, I have to, it's like wanting to own a piece of something that you feel is so beautiful. Obviously, it was like this Victorian mansion. Obviously, I can't own a Victorian mansion and live in it. And this one was kind of dilapidated, <laughs> which we know is my style. So I can't own that, but I can make a miniature of it. And it's kind of like partial ownership. I don't know. It's very weird. <laughs> it's a weird feeling, I guess, of wanting to create and own buildings, but in miniature. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. I want to own places when I can't. <laughs> oh wait, hold on. I gotta figure out where the rest of these pieces are. So I have two of them. So this was X17. 
this was x16, so I need x14 and x15. Well, okay. Oh, this was 14 and 15. Okay, so I need 16 and 17. All right, let me look for... Don't want to lose my paper pieces. They could go flying. Um, I don't see them. Hold on. Hope I'm not missing a page. Nope. And I'm also hoping by putting these pieces on, it will sit a little bit better in the base. At the moment, it's not sitting really well. Oh, here it is, very last page again. Okay. Very last page is X16 and X17. So if you are doing this kit, I know someone in the last, in the last one said, in the last live stream said they were going to order this kit. Make sure to look through the whole thing before you panic and think you don't have your pieces because they didn't quite put them in order. I mean, I'm sure they did it to save material, which I totally understand. The dragon on your daughter's project reminds me of Falcor, the luck dragon from the never-ending story. I remember that movie. I remember loving that movie. I honestly don't remember what it was about, but I remember the dragon for sure. I remember watching that when I was in third, third grade. And I don't know how long it had been out at that point. I don't know if it was new. I was in third grade in... 1993. Oh, I'm about to pull this because I'm being impatient and it's a very delicate piece. So hold on. I got to cut this so I don't pull on it and break it. Hold on. Sorry. I think I'm missing something. <laughs> book, book nooks. Y'all are talking about book nooks? Is that? Hold on. What want to try little narrow little boxes that slip into the bookshelves? Oh, okay. I've seen those projects. I think, did Square to Spare do that? I think she did where she made some books where from the front it looked like books and but then there was like a cutout for a window um i think she did that and i've seen some other people do that too i've seen it more on facebook recently people doing little things that go into bookshelves which we have a couple bookshelves so it would fit fit in <laughs> okay so let me figure out where these pieces go okay so then it tells me to glue it to the base so I really hope it fits better in the base because as of right now it does not fit well in the base I feel like but we are going to glue these pieces on and hopefully it will do better all right so I think it just glues so that it covers up all of these tabs. So all these tabs got bent and glued to the keel. And um, these pieces get glued on so that you can't see that anymore. It all gets covered up. Let's see. Era, is that a magnifier in front of your mic or is it part of the mic? No, this is a pop filter. And what it does is it kind of keeps me from breathing on the microphone. And it keeps, like, when you speak, you're kind of like, pop, 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 I think. And so it kind of protects the microphone a little bit from, especially because this is one I have to be so close to, um, it kind of helps with the sound so it's not a magnifier which would probably be helpful in this situation 
but it is for the microphone. And I had it off for a while, and then I started getting some comments about the microphone, so I put it back on. And I don't know if it like blocks the sound at all, but let's see. Let's see, hi Claire. <laughs> I think y'all, I'm reading comments, I think y'all are chatting to each other, so I'm trying to think that I missed something, but y'all are having a conversation, which is awesome. All right, I'm going to get this guy on. I'm just, this is the most awkward way to hold a cap full of glue. But that's all right. I was thinking it might be cool, I think, if I tried to sink it, like because we're talking about making it a sinking ship, like if I try to put in some resin, that would probably really mess with it. I don't think I could probably do that. I think, Aira, you should make Owl's Moving Castle too. I haven't seen that. <laughs> I haven't seen that. I, th I think I've heard of it. Okay, so I'm going to try and line this up. Let's see. I just went to the site Famous Pirate Ships in History. Those hulks were terrifying to look at. You gotta see nothing ship shape or Bristol fashion there. Maybe some of Morticia's <laughs> relatives aboy aboard. Quite possibly. <laughs> that may be um, something I could research to get some inspiration because I do think it would be fun to, uh, to paint this little guy. Just see what we could do. <laughs> Hi, John. You must see Howl's Moving Castle. Well, this would be a great time to watch it. So I'll put that on my list. Sounds up my alley. Castles, moving castles. Is it like steampunk type of um, thing where it's like a machine? Looks like the figurehead on your bowsprit is an angel, so maybe you should think about that and come up with some angelic angelic colors for your ship. Well, someone said white, and it does have gold details. It does look like an angel. Let me look. Yeah, because even on the example, it's gold. It looks like maybe an angel holding a flag. I think that does a lot to help because if you look at this side with the tabs, it looks a little bit messy. And then this, where we put the piece over it and glued it on, except for my spot of glue that went everywhere, um, it kind of helps finish it off, covering up those tabs. So I think that piece is worth it. So let me figure out how I'm supposed to put this on. Yeah, I think these pieces are exactly the same. They just go on either side. Um, do these? Hold up. Okay, yeah, these do stick out a little bit. Okay, I was trying to figure out if this was supposed to perfectly match up, but this piece sticks out a little bit further than the tabs. So, yay, that makes sense. A bit of magic, a bit of steampunk, and a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, is it something my kids can watch? You'll have to let me know. They're six and eight. So if they're, they're in that age range. So let me know if it's something they can watch. Howl's is a Miyazaki film anime. Oh, okay. I would try paint, resin, and glue out on the scrap pieces to see how it would react. That is a really good idea. Test it first. 
before I put this entire thing together and then say, oops. <laughs> I mean, I do think that the paper being the sturdiness that it is would definitely be able to take it. I would probably have to paint in very thin layers because just that's what I always suggest if you're painting on something that's paper paint in thin layers um, because the less water or the less moisture you get on it the less it's going to warp for sure uh, they should be able to watch it okay I think pastel colors would make it haunted hauntingly angelic <laughs> based on a children's book. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. The pirate ship name should be Fallen Angel. <laughs> that would be fun. Do like an entire scene with a, a shipwreck. It would definitely be in a different scale than I'm used to. And that's what my next, my next video is gonna be about scale. That was supposed to be today's video and I got I got a lot of it done like I'm, I'm making some just a couple reference sheets for you guys because I think sometimes scale can be confusing especially if you're new to the hobby and so I wanted to just make some quick references and um, so I talk about different scales and uh, Anyway, I'm hoping it'll be a helpful resource when the video's done. Obviously, it's about scale, so it's not going to be my most exciting video I've ever made, but I'm hoping it'll be a helpful video. <laughs> oh, chalk pastels. That's a good idea. I have been loving using chalk pastels on miniatures recently. I feel like every single piece of furniture I've made recently, I've used chalk pastels on. All right, so I'm gonna, almost done with the keel. I need to make my own, like, what do they call it? Not a thesaurus. You know, my own little book of words I've learned <laughs> from my channel <laughs> over the years. I'm doing a speed build with cardboard and paper before I painted it. I brushed some super heavy gel from Liquitex on it and it didn't end up warping at all. So that's cool. Super heavy gel. Hmm. It must not have like a water consistent or a water like mixed in, in the ingredients. <laughs> Necessary video. Scale is the math class part of miniature school. <laughs> yeah, I am going to try. I'm... I just filmed um, some of me talking today because I'm like, hey, if I'm going to get put makeup on for the live stream, might as well film the face part of the video. I do try to make it a little bit fun. <laughs> Glossary, that's right. I do try to make it a little bit fun um, and not, I mean, I know some people love math and I don't want to talk bad about math. Math was not my favorite and I know there's at least a few other people in the world where math is not their favorite. So I do try to um, make it a little bit fun for those who may have a hard time getting through uh, something that has fractions and all that kind of stuff in it. So I'll try my best. All right, almost done with the keel. And then I think I'm gonna have to replenish my glue supply here. I really didn't know how long this was all gonna take. It'd be nice if kits had like, this will take you however many hours. <laughs> <laughs> Jillian says, I love math. Michelle says, I hate math. <laughs> yeah, the, it's usually one way or the other. <laughs> so, 
I, I survived it in school, but it just was never anything that I was super excited about. I would have much, <laughs> I would have much rather have been in art class or reading, writing. Yeah. So for my fellow math survivors, <laughs> I'll try to make the video a little bit, a little bit fun. <laughs> Bye, Rhonda. Thanks for being here. Hi, Niall. <laughs> I like helpful videos. They help. <laughs> Trying to figure out scales can be frustrating when you are starting. Definitely. And in this video has been long overdue. I constantly have questions in the comments about scale and specifically how to change pattern sizes because all my patterns that um, I give for free in my videos, they are in 12th scale. So for those of you that work in half scale or for those of you that work in one sixth scale, that can be frustrating if you don't know how to change the pattern so that it's useful for you. So um, I talk about that a little bit as well. So whenever those videos come out with a pattern and someone's like, well, I can't use this pattern, I could say, hey, go to this video and it'll tell you how to scale the patterns so <laughs> i love math that applies to my life <laughs> math was okay for me personally the one i couldn't really i can't really stand was physics i had a hard time with physics too you know the the science that i loved was chemistry i almost became a chemist it was like it was this close maybe I don't even know what kind of scale I'm trying to create here it was like architecture chemistry like I was going back and forth between the other ones and then I realized all the creative more creative stuff I'm sure you can do creative things in chemistry I mean it's chemists right now that our world's kind of relying on um, but I went architecture route because there was a little bit more art and design there um, and, but I really did like chemistry. I don't know why, it was just something that I understood. But physics never really, never really got it. <laughs> I had an algebra teacher that passed me just so he wouldn't have to try to teach me algebra anymore. Oh, Danielle. Algebra for me was like trying to find a piece of clear glitter in an ocean of sand. Oh, Brooke loves math. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a very, you either love it or you hate it, I think. <laughs> My husband and I aren't, aren't good in math, but our son is so smart in math, I guess. So guess who is helping us now? <laughs> okay, let me, okay, so now it wants me to glue it to the stand. But I don't know if I want to do that. Do I want to do that if I'm going to paint it and put it in like a little shipwreck scene? I wonder if it makes it easier to build it later on. Ooh, it does fit so much better in the stand. I think I'm just gonna, cause now it kind of like snaps in before it didn't sit at all. So I think I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna glue it. I'm just gonna stick it like that. So now it stands up and here's a close up. For those, if for anyone who's, who's following along so honestly, that wasn't too bad. It wasn't too difficult to put all of that together. I'm not going to glue it to the stand in case I decide to put it into a scene. <laughs> all right, the next step. Ooh, here we get some like, some more t glossary terms. We're going to need some more glossary terms for the top part of the ship that actually has like the doors um where you can like go in and out no to the stand yeah I'm thinking the same thing just let it sit on the stand but then later on if we want to put it in something we'll just we won't have to deal with the stand yeah because it wants you to glue it in there so I guess if you wanted to make the model and just leave it on the paper model 
the stand would be great because it is a nice little stand it's got like a gold plate nameplate so nice little stand all right so i need to find x18 x19 and x20 and they all go together to make this piece right here so the construct the instructions can be a little confusing because you have to follow these little red arrows because because I'm in the USA I'm used to like they go like this but this one kind of wraps around and if you don't follow the little red arrows then you can kind of get lost in the instructions a little bit so I guess it's this part is this first part that we're building so I guess it's like a little hut, hutch, hut, I don't know. <laughs> uh, hi, Pamelia. Pamelia. <laughs> well, we still have an hour. We still got an hour to go and we just finished up the keel. <laughs> Are you having to do the mast as well? Do you mean the tall, the, this part? Yeah, I was looking at that, if that's what you mean. Um, and it's these really long pieces, and then you start connecting them. And that's just the bottom part. Then there's another level of masks as well. So I was kind of looking ahead in the instructions going, oh my goodness. Okay, let me find the, what I'm looking for x8 I said x18 and what did I say x18 x19 and x20 and I'm missing them again I don't know what that is These, I'm telling you, these are kind of hard to see. Oh, okay. That's, there's one. Oh, okay. And there's the other two. All right. Now they're all out of order, which I don't think it matters. It, I don't think it matters anyway, because you're going to have to look through every sheet <laughs> to find what you're looking for. Yay. I'm glad I said it right. Yeah, the flag part is going to be interesting. So, but I am, I do want to make some ships for the captain's quarters. And I'm really hoping uh, that this will give me some ideas. I don't know, because I've never made a ship, a little mini ship. No, uh, we started, yeah, we started an hour ago, but I was just kind of finishing up, I think it was this side is what I finished up. So now, but now we're kind of getting to the exciting part, which is we're putting the actual like little um, pieces on top. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm trying to show them a little bit up close but let me cut these out and I'll show you guys each one so you can see them a little bit better do you ever get intimidated by a project um sometimes I get intimidated by the thought of a project or wondering if it's something that can be completed um or I get, okay, here's what I get intimidated by. <laughs> There's so many things I want to make in my lifetime, but everything takes so long to make in miniature, to put in the amount of detail. And so what I really get intimidated by is the amount of time things take and the fact that I I don't think I will ever in my lifetime be able to make all the projects I want to make. <laughs> Just to be honest, like that is intimidating to me. 
but I'm just going to keep going and whatever gets made, gets made. And I'm not going to think about it <laughs> too much. <laughs> and make one in a bottle. <laughs> what do the tabs on the sheet say? Would they help you find things? Not really. The tabs on the sheet, they all say, let's see if I can show you. Hold on. They all say 1-24 or I-24 and they all say the same thing. So the, and the reason I think is because this project number is, I guess it's 124 is 124. So I think as their laser cutters are pushing out these sheets, if it has a 124 at the top of it, it becomes part of this project. And then they're spaced out like this so that the person putting it together knows that every, every single sheet is accounted for. So it doesn't really help me, but I'm sure it helps the person who is putting the project together or putting the kit together. All right, let me not lose. Okay, so this is piece 18. And it looks like this is the top of it because it has some more of that decking. Let me, there we go. It has some more of that decking engraved into it. And so this would be um, really difficult to try and keep um, the detail. I don't know if you can see it. So I'll just have to be careful if I do paint it to try and keep the detail of that. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to bring y'all down saying that I couldn't. <laughs> it's just, I don't, I don't think I get intimidated by uh, projects as far as not thinking that I can do them because I think that's one of the things I love is just trying to figure out how to do them. Now I have gotten intimidated by resin because I tried to use it and it was frustrating and um, a project that I had worked really hard on was, was well, it's kind of ruined. I still have it, um, but it just, it has to stay under glass because it smells like resin because it's not completely cured. Um, so I was intimidated by resin. I've now since then used it again and I'm not as intimidated. But yeah, I'm, I'm I think that's part of the fun of miniatures is trying to figure out, can you do it? But I just wish, um, I just wish I had like an extra set of hands or an extra few hours in the day. But yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to bum you guys out. <laughs> uh, that piece looks like a sweater. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Like a pirate sweater, almost. Okay, let me get 20 out, and then we can start putting this piece together. All right. Cut that out. There we go. Okay, so these should be pieces 18, 19, and 20. And it looks like 18 I have to fold over itself. So I got to pay attention to which part is the front and the back or the front and the inside or the top and the inside. I wouldn't attempt that ship. I'm impressed you're doing. I actually purchased this a very long time ago, like maybe 10. No, I'm about to say 10 years. Psh, no, wasn't that long ago, like a year ago. <laughs> and, uh, I was, I was excited about it and then kind of got pushed to the wayside and then we started doing the captain's quarters and I found it again. I was like, oh, I want to do this. So <laughs> I thought the Adams family house was done. If not, are you going to make the baby, baby pubert? I think here's, here's the plan for the Adams family house. I think plans change a lot. Okay. So what I did is I just bent all these pieces these tabs are going to go underneath and it's all going to get glued together to be kind of like a self-contained little piece, I think. Yeah. Okay. 
so here is the uh, the tentative plan for the Adams family. <laughs> I want to finish it to the point to where if I brought it to a show and put it on show like as like a display that no one would look at it and and be like there's no furniture in that room there's nothing on that ceiling like it would be finished so everything would be completed there would be wallpaper there would be lights all that kind of stuff now the accessories I don't feel as much pressure to finish those because there's always things I could add because there's so many different iterations of the Adams family I could be adding things for years so my goal is to quote unquote finish it to the point to where I could show it and people would think it is finished but then I can keep working on it so I think if I did make baby pubert he would be he would be one of those after projects possibly so I would get everything finished so it could be put on display and then after that I would slowly add items as I got time to do it so someone in another um, at another point mentioned Ophelia which is Morticia's sister she's from the original 1960s show love to add her at some point um, yeah so I could continue adding forever but I want to um, get it to a point where I can just put it on display and whatever is made at that point all makes sense together as a finished item. But yeah, I don't think it'll ever <laughs> quite be finished. Oh, is she's not in here. She's in the living room. She's hanging out with the kids who are watching a movie. <laughs> Ever since you started making Captain's Quarters, I've been watching pirate movies. <laughs> yeah, I have a list of movies that I still need to watch. Um, some of them I've watched. I need to um, watch some other ones. Mm. <laughs> Aw, Pubert is an accessory. <laughs> Sorry, Pubert. <laughs> Dog mom rules when they look cute and comfy. Can't move them. <laughs> You can make the Black Widow from the Adams Family. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Debbie. Debbie. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I, I do think I want to make Debbie, uh, but I'm going to make her just a pile of ash with some uh, credit cards sticking out. Because that's kind of how, where they ended their relationship. So uh, <laughs> I think I'll make, I'll make that and that'll probably be up in uh, she'll hang out in uh, Fester's room okay I repositioned the camera so I feel like I'm in a much more like natural position where I'm not like going off the camera as much but you might be getting nope you're not seeing that much of my head I'm always afraid you're gonna just see my head all the time if I get too close <laughs> okay so is turning out to be like a little box and then the top of it has that wood flooring texture have you seen the animated Adams family yes I did get to see it I saw it in November I wanted to see it earlier but just didn't actually make it to the theater until November but I liked it there were some parts that were interesting <laughs> But I liked it, and I thought they got a lot of good references in there. And I like the music. Okay, so I'm not done with this piece, but I just want to see where it sits. Because all these little tabs, so these little holes right here that are put in here, this guy fits into there. I just want to see if they line up. So that is going to be an interesting, an interesting process of trying to get all those tabs lined up. Okay, so X20 goes on the long side of this, like so. Okay, 
That's not too difficult. We can do that. <laughs> I was thinking about the whole end scene of the animated one. I added Ichabod the tree. Can y'all see Ichabod? Yeah, well, it's kind of hard to see, but he's the tree. I added Ichabod from the animated movie. Forget the actress's name, but she played her amazingly. Joan, Joan Cusack. Yes. <laughs> she did a great job. She really fit into the family. <laughs> I really like Joan Cusack in a lot of different things. She's a versatile actress. All right, I'm putting glue on the back of this instead of the back of that piece because there's so many openings I don't want to be able to see the glue through the openings so that's why I'm putting it on the back of this although I'm afraid some of it's still gonna squish out but that'll be okay I'll take some of the thicker parts off and of course put it on my hand <laughs> Did you know Grandmama was Winifred from Hocus Pocus? Yes. Uh, why can't I think of her name? I can't think of her name right now. Someone will know. <laughs> How did Gomez and Morticia meet? Are they distantly related? Well, according to the TV show, Gomez was supposed to marry uh, Ophelia, Morticia's sister. But once Gomez saw Morticia, he fell in love and no longer wanted to marry Ophelia. And I can't quite remember the entire episode, but by the end of it, everyone was okay with that. <laughs> Bette Midler, that's it. Bette Midler. She was Winifred and Hocus Pocus and Grandmama. Okay, so now I have to bend. So I have that piece stuck on the back. It makes like a little railing type piece. And now I have to bend this piece around the front. Oh, and look, it has this like tiny little doorway. I'm not quite sure my laser cutter could do this. This has to be a pretty advanced I don't know is this laser cut or die cut this actually might be die cut I'm trying to see if there's any like laser ash that comes off on my fingers doesn't seem like it but in my experience um cardstock doesn't actually give off a lot of laser ash but I don't know could be die cut does it, I wonder if it says. It doesn't really say what it is. High quality, high quality, oh, laser cut. So it is laser cut. It is a little bit nicer laser cutter than I have. <laughs> Let's see. Uh... Where did you get that kit from? I missed it if you mentioned it earlier. I got it from Hobby Town. So it's the, it's a, like a hobby shop where you can, it's got like RC cars and um, railroad stuff. It doesn't have a lot of like dollhouse stuff, but there's a ton of stuff you can use to make miniatures and dollhouses so yes blossom rock was the original grandmama in the tv show um bet midler was the voice of grandmama in the animated movie the recent one that came out okay so now i'm gonna add glue to this little tiny piece here try not to get it all over everywhere. Too late. I got it all over everywhere. 
I think I'm just going to have to do one bit of this at a time. I am not a patient gluer. Is that a word? A gluer? Glueess? I'm not a patient glueess. <laughs> um, I have a K40 machine and it's on the cheaper side of machines, but I decided to go with a cheaper machine before I got into anything more expensive because I just didn't really know, you know, I didn't really know a lot about them. Like we did our research, but I didn't know how much I would use it. Turns out I love it. <laughs> and for now, for cutting my 12 scale kits, it works great. Um, no complaints as far as that goes. But for cutting my, for some cutting something like this, I would probably need something a little bit more expensive, but I don't cut kits that are this small, so I'm not worrying about it at this moment. <laughs> Let's see, does, <laughs> is that Hobby Lobby? No, Hobby Town is different from Hobby Lobby. This is funny to watch without sound. My aunt called and at pauses, I was trying to imagine what you were saying. <laughs> we have said a lot of things. <laughs> and apparently I made everyone sad at one point, which I apologize for. <laughs> Hi, Robin. Oh no. Internet is uh, really key right now. <laughs> I'm glad you got it back. Or did you get it back? Or are you borrowing from somewhere? I hope you get it back. Okay, so this piece is coming around here. This is where it's hard to see. I really thought I amped up the, the light here. Do you know what scale that is? I don't know what scale it is. It could be, let me think, it could be 144th scale, but I'm not sure. It could possibly be that it is not a specific scale because it looks like they're not, they're meant to be like one of projects. So they may have just created it at whatever size they wanted. Um, I have seen several of them in these little boxes. So they may just be scaling these down so that they fit specifically in these boxes. Yeah, like here's a lady and she's got several of these boxes on her desk. So I don't know if they have like a modular system, like every time you build one of these, it fits in there. So it may not be a specific scale, it may just be whatever scale it needed to be to go into their system. <laughs> um, would you ever get a 3D printer? I have a 3D printer. It is not my favorite machine. Um, I tell, <laughs> I told my husband the laser cutter, if we're talking about machines, laser cutter is my best friend. 3D printer is my acquaintance, and we talk very rarely. If I have to do anything on the 3D printer, I definitely get my husband involved because I get very frustrated. It fails a lot, and then I have to restart prints, and it could be the, the printer itself. I don't know. Um, it's very frustrating. <laughs> so... It's not a, it's a resin printer. It's not an extruder printer where like where it has like a little nozzle and it like shoots it, it melts it and like shoots it out and goes around and around and around in layers. It's a resin printer and it's hard to tell if it's functioning correctly until it's already print printing for like an hour or two, um, sometimes even three hours. It can be difficult to know if you're even printing anything. So I get frustrated a lot. The laser cutter is a lot more precise and um yeah so <laughs> is 
let's see. I'm multitasking. A friend is in Luke on Facebook playing songs from the band he had when we were in college. Wow. We could still use that ship in the captain's quarters. Could be used as a center room piece. Cool. That I mean, that's true. It could be. Um. <laughs> Hi, Victoria. I'm sorry, Zachary, if you were sad about something. Hi, Hannah. Sorry, I'm missing saying hi to some people. I'm glad you're here, Robin. <laughs> okay, so this piece should fit in here. Like so. What time is it? We have about 30 minutes left. Let me see if I can get all the tabs in all at once. I don't want to force it because then the tabs bend. Ooh, oh, no, missed one. Maybe one of those things where the tabs don't all go in, I might cut it off, but that works pretty well. Try and show you. Yeah, the camera's having a hard time focusing on things. Oh, the ship's name is Black Pirate. That's the name of the kit. Um, but someone said we should paint it and call it Fallen Angel. <laughs> All right, so that's not glued on. This piece is not glued on, but it's a good start. So now I need to find X21 through Um, let's just start with finding X21. Let's, let's do that first. <laughs> Hi, Chantal. <laughs> Fallen Angel. <laughs> How big is 125th scale? 125th scale is going to be just about, make sure I'm saying it right. So 125th scale is going to be just about half scale. So my Fairfield project that's right there, that's uh, 124th. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I'm watching on 80 inch TV or wouldn't be able to see it. Yeah, now my, I got to find, what did I say I was looking for? There it is. I found it. So this one gets folded just like the other one. Let me pull it out. And then you guys are going to have to let me know if you want me to continue this, because obviously in the next 30 minutes, we're not going to finish it up. Do you want me to continue it when we live stream next month or just next time I live stream? Who knows if it'll be next month or not? Maybe before that, just never knew. <laughs> um, but let me know, is this interesting enough to continue on with? Or do you guys want me to do something else? Uh, because I want to make sure I'm doing things in the live streams that you guys want to watch. And we've done two streams on this kit. So um, just let me know. Okay, so now I'm going to, I think, make this, this piece right here. You can see it has the wood flooring in it. I think I'm just going to bend it like the other one to where the flooring engraving details are on top. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Have a good sleep. <laughs> continue in the next. I'd be down to continue. Continue. I'd rather move on to a new project. Whatever you want to do, continue, continue. Okay, maybe I'll, um, I'll see how much longer I think I have. Or maybe we can even start painting it, which may be a little bit more interesting to those of you who may be having a hard time seeing what I'm doing. Whatever you want to do, I think people just want to hang out with you. Oh, <laughs> I actually like being here for the visit and not for the building. <laughs> I can understand that too. I'm enjoying it. Move on to a new project. This is like watching paint dry. 
Yeah, that's what I, I was thinking. It might be kind of hard to see. I'll think about it, um, try and figure out what we can do to make it a little bit more interesting. Maybe we'll take a break and paint a little bit and maybe make an environment for it. And then we can continue building it in another, because I, I really like the idea of putting it into a scene, like a minute, like a sunken ship. <laughs> fin maybe finish it on my own time, paint it in the next stream. What do y'all think about that? What if I, because if you do actually want to make this kit, I mean, it comes with step-by-step -step instructions. I think that's a good suggestion from Darkest Raven Designs for me to finish it and then we can paint it in the next one. Or I could even, I could go up to the point where before I do the sales so that you guys could see um, how the sales go on. I don't even know how the sales go on, but it might be easier to paint it before the sales go on anyway. So I could do that. I mean, it's really, it's just making, it looks like the next few steps are gonna be just making these mast pieces and sticking them on, which may be hard to see. So y'all like that? Okay, it looks like you guys are agreeing with that. <laughs> okay. Alrighty, awesome. Y'all can keep letting me know what you think. I'm gonna try and get this guy bent. <laughs> okay. It's just finding all the little tabs, which I can't understand how that would be kind of hard for y'all to see. I'm bending all the little tabs. So. You could do a video of you finishing it so people could watch it if they want and then paint it in your next live stream. That's a good idea. I don't know if I, like, I don't know if I would be talking through it because it would probably be, <laughs> I'd probably be watching something while I was doing it. I guess I could like reserve, I could have a video if there was anything that was really difficult and I could say, hey, I filmed this real quick because this part was difficult if you were trying to do this one. But honestly, so far the directions, even though there's not like any written directions, the picture directions are, are really well done. Could have a weathering tutorial. You know I love my weathering. <laughs> I, I admire you doing this. It just seems so nerve-wracking to me. Well, I think um, one thing I learned from the Fairfield is I wasn't so nervous about if it was a huge failure and it didn't work because um, the Fairfield, it was just interesting us all trying to figure out what the directions meant. So if the directions had been confusing, it would have been probably just as entertaining or maybe, maybe even be more entertaining <laughs> than me actually putting it together. Mm -hmm. Hanging out with everyone is more rewarding than the actual project. Yeah, I think we're all excited to, to hang out with each other. Okay. This one is more difficult. Why did they make this one more difficult? Maybe because it's bigger, they decided it needed more tabs? I don't know. This one is more difficult. Do the painting in the next stream, and if it doesn't fill up enough time, start with the environment and carry that over to the next stream again, perhaps. Maybe so. I like that idea of, of doing that. Um, your alchemist room was beautiful. I love all the different techniques. Thank you. If you finish it, then paint it next time and make the background in the next live stream. That would be cool too. Okay. Awesome. Sounds like we have a plan. Cause like I said, I want to do thing. I mean, cause I, you know, I could do this on my own time if y'all weren't interested in it, but I want to, I want to do things that you guys want to see in the live stream. And I like that it creates a platform for us all to hang out. I feel like my hands are getting shaky. There we go. 
which is not good when you're trying to use an X-Acto. This one's a hard part, guys. <laughs> Bye, Sophie's Choice. <laughs> Have a good night. I think we've got about 20 minutes left, and it may take the entire 20 minutes for me to put this piece together. I might, I have half a mind to cut these tabs off because I don't think they're useful in any way. I'm going to cut the tabs off. <laughs> I made a lot of ship models while writing my fantasy novel, Crimson. They build one in the book. Oh, that's cool. Is your novel on Amazon? Whatever you want to do is good. I'm just glad I'm not working through it. Okay, I'm cutting the tabs off. I don't care what they say. That's just near impossible to do with the tabs, so I'm cutting them off. There we go. Might I regret it later? I don't know. As they say, that's future Ava's problem. All right. <laughs> My lunch is ready. I'll come back. <laughs> Have a good lunch. All right, so I'm just going to glue these down without tabs, and I think it'll be just fine. All right. Get this all together. Says, yeah, my movies are on Amazon, or my novels are on Amazon. Okay, so, so far I don't regret cutting the tabs off. That was way easier. I, I guess these other models are different colors, so maybe they would be easier to see than this pirate ship. But of course I was attracted to the pirate ship. I don't know if we'll do another one of these in the live stream ever, but it's fun to try new things. <laughs> Hi, Joy. <laughs> I can't coin that phrase. Of course, I put my own name in it, but I've heard other people say that. That's future so-and-so's problem. I won't worry about it now. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, it should be up right after right after we're done with the stream you should be able to go back and watch it we're working on this pirate ship which has been going well until now my novel fragment is available in 18 languages wow did you do you know the different languages warren it's a lot of languages i'm sure you had some help in translating hi crazy craft lady I have a hard time knowing two languages. I don't know two languages. I'm working on it. Okay, so now I'm gonna do this. So my suggestion, if you decide to do this, don't be afraid to cut the tabs off. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I decided to go ahead and do my nails. Every now and then I do them. <laughs> yeah, we missed a little bit, but um, I think we decided that for the next one, I'm going to kind of super speed through the rest of these directions just because it's kind of hard for you guys to see. And then we're going to try and paint the model ship. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ava, for your live stream. Time to go eat ribs. Nice. And potato salad. And then watch Onward. Oh, we watched that. It was cute. You'll like it. Different publishers translated. That's so cool. This mermaid-themed baby changing table looks like one of those five-minute Barbie craft videos. Send help. Oh, no. Well, send me a photo, and I'll, I'll see if I can help. How's your weather there? Are you getting any rain? It is cold. It is cold here. Why? And rainy. 
like Texas forgot that we were supposed to be going towards summer. Which once summer gets here, I'll probably miss it being cold, which is how it goes. It's always greener on the other side. But um, yeah, it's cold today. Which I have been enjoying going out and walking, but we did not go out and walk today. We've been trying to teach Stormy how to walk well on a leash. She really, 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 really hates cars. <laughs> but this is a great time to do it because there's not a lot of cars going back and forth right now. So this would probably be the best time to do it. <laughs> okay, so I got that together with no tabs. And this goes on to the back of the ship like so with more tabs, which the tabs so far have not been bad, but for this particular piece were not fun. And I may cut off some more here if they don't behave. I'm threatening the tabs. Behave or I will cut you off. <laughs> It's cold here too and snowing. My goodness. It's 2.43 here in Cape Town, South Africa. Wow, I've been to Cape Town, South Afri Africa. I lived in, this is again when I was younger. Where did we live? Mom and dad, are you still watching? Sorry with a J. It's not Johannesburg. No, that's not it. I can't think of it. But I've been to Cape Town. Yes, my last name is Bentley. My first name's Aira. The Grands wanted a pool, so I got them one. And they were in it once before all the rain. Oh, no. Live in Arizona. It's starting to get hot now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So I think... I think I'll keep the back tabs. I'm going to cut the side tabs off of this one. Again, they didn't listen, so they're getting cut off. They'll be fine. There we go. Okay. So now it should work. Now that all the tabs are gone. Oh, it's starting to look like a ship. <laughs> you guys need rain, Hannah? Uh, pollen count. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's there's been so much pollen, like my car is yellow. <laughs> Northern Florida is beautiful right now, but Southern Florida is so hot already, you'd think it was summer. Oh, George, South Africa. Thank you. Yes, we lived in George. What town am I thinking of that starts with a J? Um, tabs hate me. <laughs> so many different types of weather. Well, I mean, I guess that's the world for you. New Jersey finally got some sun, but windy. I think I saw the cast of Wizard of Oz fly by a few times today. Okay, so, oh, she's here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Here she is. Look. Can you say hi? Look, look up here. She's getting furry again. We had her hair cut. She's getting fuzzy. <laughs> Johannesburg. Thank you, Danielle. Danielle. <laughs> that's what I was thinking of. Isn't that what I said? Maybe that's not. I don't know. All right. I got to finish a ship. Okay. So. This. Okay. This piece has so many pieces, but it starts to have some of the gold. And I'm wondering if I should not put the gold on yet, especially if we're going to paint. Mm, but then 
it'll be hard to add it later. I don't know. I don't know if it'll be too difficult. I guess it is Johannesburg that I was thinking of. Yes, Johannesburg. You guys are right. But we lived in George. Now that my parents have said George, yes, that's where we lived. <laughs> George, South Africa. Okay, so I'm going to look for X22, and I'm not going to put the gold pieces on. Oh, there it is. It's always in the piece I'm not holding. <laughs> Do you like cake? There's an Adam's Family episode of Cake Force. I didn't know that. Sounds amazing. I love cake. She's your timer to end the stream. <laughs> she says, I'm sorry, you've not paid enough attention to me. You need to end your stream. <laughs> okay, I'm going to cut these out. I'm very impressed by this laser cutter. Such detail. So I'm going to get this one all cut out and we'll see how it fits on this piece. But I think I am going to reserve the gold pieces. I think the only, yeah, the only gold I've put on is the base and we're not using the base. So I think I'll just save the gold pieces until after I paint and they'll be like these nice little shiny details. <laughs> Hi, Victoria. Hold on the gold. Okay. Yes, so I will keep the gold sheet till later. We may just have to backtrack to figure out where it's all supposed to go. Uh, okay. So this clamps onto the side of this piece. Yes, yes, okay. Sorry, that was probably a weird noise I just made. So this piece has these like lantern pieces that go on the very edge, which are kind of scary because they look very thin and I'm going to have to work very hard not to push on them. <laughs> but these go, this piece goes like this. on the sides and gets glued down. <laughs> Paint the gold green because it's not real. <laughs> okay, so let me add, let me double check, that's what I'm supposed to do. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's what I'm supposed to do. And line it up with the bottom. Okay. Whew, I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to pull apart these little pieces of paper. Really, really don't. Does the gold have tabs that go in the black? I don't know. I'll have to look on the gold sheet. So far, it doesn't look like it. It looks like you just glue it to the surface. And there's like little, like, dotted lines that were laser cut into the uh, into the black paper that tells you where to put it. That's what I've observed so far. Okay, so let me stick this in here. This glue grabs really, really fast. I mean, it's called quick dry, but sometimes it dries a little too fast, especially when it comes to paper. It just grabs on so quick, you don't have any time to change your mind. So here's how it looks. This is the back part of the ship. Let's see. <laughs> Could this material be hardened with super glue. You're thinking like Heather Tracy. Possibly. I have super glue. There were um, earlier in the stream, 
um, I can't remember who it was, but someone suggested hardening it with um, Mod Podge. But I might try super glue because I know that would sink into the paper a little bit more. So here's how it's looking. And we were going to look at the gold paper to see if there were tabs on here. It looks like there's one entire section that's completely made of gold that gets bent into a piece. But mostly they're like little detail bits that you can add on. This must be the wheel. Add that on for the angel. It's pirate skull. <laughs> Alright. Well, I think that's all I'm going to be able to get to for today. So... I think um, super glue may leave, shine, leave it shiny and not paint well. Gotta go dinner time. Um, yeah, I'll kind of play around with it. Um, I might use uh, some of these scrap pieces just to kind of see how it acts before I work on the main ship. But I'll go with uh, the plan that we had for me to finish the main body. And then the next time I will paint it and Maybe we'll make a little scene for it, and it'll be a little sunken ship. It's a smaller scale than I'm used to working for with, but I think it'll be fun. <laughs> this is wonderful. I need to get one for my husband. He collects ship models like three feet long with mass about three feet high. Yeah, this one's a little smaller, but I've enjoyed it. Um, I have heard, I think in the last one we talked about the metal ones and that they were really they were kind of hard to work with this is pretty easy to work with i mean it's paper so it's easy to just take the tab off like i did when it wasn't working for me but honestly everything seems to fit together pretty well you just got to have a extra dose of patience <laughs> yay thank you guys for being here thanks for hanging out with me <laughs> I hope you guys have a good weekend and a restful weekend. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to go um, hang out with the family. And I think they're watching a movie, hanging out. So. <laughs> Art by Leslie. Angelina is asking if you have a YouTube channel. Usually if you want to see if someone has a YouTube channel, um, I think you can click on their icon and because everybody technically has a YouTube channel it's just whether they have uploaded something or not um, but you can um, click on it <laughs> yeah everyone stay healthy um, keep yourself safe and yeah and show some kindness to your fellow human beings. We're all in this together. <laughs> all right. Well, I will see you guys in the next stream. Um, unless unless um, there is another opportunity for me to stream, our next stream will be the second Friday of next month. But if I can stream, I totally will because I know um, this is a great way to just have a little bit of community and sit and chat and hang out with each other. So if I do get the opportunity, please know that I will stream because I really do enjoy it. And it's encouraging to me for sure. So <laughs> yay. And I'm so glad so many people were able to make it. I know sometimes in the morning it's difficult. So I'll try and do more of switching back and forth. <laughs> All right. You guys have an amazing night. And I will talk to you later. Bye.